Okay, so we just looked at dropping a ball. Now I want to look at a rolling ball. So um, I have my window. Uh, let's make it like wider this time. So maybe 600 by 400. 600 across, 400 down. I want to draw a hill here. Maybe from like there, a straight line from there down to say here. So that's at, let's call that 300. And let's see where, where is this going to be? This is going to be, let's make this 100 down, well, 50 down. Uh, so that's 50. And then maybe let's make it a little flatter. Let's have it go all the way over to here. And we'll call that 350. Oops. Sorry. All right, let's see if I can. That line, or that line. And there it is, 300. So we'll start at 50 and we'll jump over here to 350. And then it's not really, this is um, the x value here is 350, the y value here is 400. Back here, the x value is 0, the y value is 50. Then what I want to do is draw a ball here. Uh, let's make it 50 by 50. I'm starting here at zero, zero, and I want that ball to roll down this hill. A little bit weird, but we at the bottom we would have a rectangle here with the ball in it. And then I gotta figure out where that is as well. So, um, this is 50, so that's actually hitting the edge of the thing. That's not a very good picture. And then 50, so we're up 50, so that's at a height of 350 there. And then that's at 350, so this is 350, 350. So, you know, I know I, I go through that pretty quickly. Um, That is a lot easier to do on paper like I'm doing than to try and do it within the code. What's gonna happen if you try to do it within the code is you might get it to work, but then as soon as you wanna change something in your code, everything gets funky. So it's much better to try to figure it out on paper first, and then we can utilize that within the code. Okay, so the first thing will be to create the window and draw the hill, and maybe then draw the circle. And we'll worry about moving the circle after that. Okay, so we're in chapter 3G. We'll do a new Java class. Um, we're going to call it rolling ball. And, you know, while I'm just drawing a ball, I, I'm trying to sort of draw, have code that is um, basic enough in the coding, but has the complexity that you could then adapt to some other figure if you wanted to move something else around. So even though I'm just doing a ball, you could have a series of things. You could have a person walking down the hill, for example. And that would involve like, if it was a stick figure, a head, a line, two legs, arms. So head, body, arms, and two legs. So five components. Instead of just the ball, you'd have five things and they'd be going down the hill. Okay, your name. Computer Science 142, today's date. So when I write date, I want you to type in the date this is. This program will use animation. Utilize animation. A ball. Roll. You know, it's not really going to roll down a hill, but roll down a hill. Do import the AWT. Everything from there. This is 
for the graphics objects that gets created by the drawing panel. I don't need a dot there. Okay. So in main, let's create our drawing panel. Let's call it panel. New drawing panel. And it is 600 by 400. Notice that, you know, that kind of has to be decided before we figure out what our animation is going to look like. Um, because if you, if you want to know where something's going to go, you have to kind of know how big or how much space do you have and, and, or at least knowing that will help us establish the loops. That's kind of why I went back here and did the, you know, where am I starting? Where am I finishing? That helps me figure out the loops that I'm going to have to go through to get from zero, zero down to 350, 350. I might go 70 loops, maybe each of which travels 25, something like that. Okay. Uh, panel, we need a graphics object, so we'll go um, uh, graphics, let's call it graph equals panel dot get graphics. It's a second choice there. And then I'm going to draw that line. So it's going to be graph dot draw line. And what it let's look at what it wants for parameters. It wants x1, y1, x2, y2. So it wants the four coordinates of the first point and the second point. So the first point is at, I did this already, 0, 050. 0, 50. The second point, the terminal point, is at down here, 350, 400. Let's run it. Uh, 350. So when I look at this and I look at my picture here, what I forgot was my window is actually 600 wide. So I could either change it to 400, 400 by 400, or I could go over to 550 here instead, which is what I want to do. So we need to go back to our original picture, fix it. You probably were looking at me like I was what I was doing. So that's not 350, that's 550, 400. And the other one is also not 350. It's also, let's see, it's 550. Okay, but the, three, the other 350 is right. Okay, I'm not crazy about this little comma there. Let's get rid of that. All right, so now we'll draw the first red ball up here. Um, it's not uncommon that you will do what I just did where you have, you thought you figured it all out, but then it doesn't quite do what it want, you want it to do. So you just fix it then, but then also fix it on paper so that if I then want to, um, you know, go back and change it, I. No, it's, it's not changing this. It's changing this with respect to everything else that we're drawing. Because in general, you're going to have a scene with several things. So the oval, the little circle, is has upper left corner of 0, 0, and it's 50 by 50. So we got 0, 0. Notice how much easier this is to do by having figured that out first. And I actually want it to be a rec an, oval, uh, an open circle. There it is. Oh, but it's not red. And it's also not touching my line. So why is it not touching my line? Because they're not exact. The square is touching the line. So if you come over here, there's a square there that is touching the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my line up 
a little bit. So that's a fix that I'm going to do here. Instead of making that 50, let's make it 45 and see what happens. And then let's do graph dot um, set color. Color dot red. They're almost touching now. I mean, that's probably close enough. Um, if I wanted to bring it up a little higher, I could see what happens. Um, so I went to 45. Let's try 40. Uh, wait, that's changing the y value. It's changing the height. Yeah, I should do it. It's gonna. Oh, look at that. So potentially that could mess us up, but let's just see what happens. That looks pretty good. So now we want to let's do this trick. Let's capture the thing that's not moving, which is the line. I want to capture that in a method called uh, draw scene because maybe it's a line, but maybe it has a line and a tree and a, you know, or it's it's some ocean, you know, it's water, it's a planet. I don't know what it is in my animation, but it's it's something that is not moving. And so I want to put the code for the line, which is really just one code right now. Uh, maybe there's a, a, a draw color, a set color to black again for that line. So I want to put that in a method called draw scene. So we're going to go public, static, void, draw scene, or background, S-C-E-N-E. -E. And we'll have it except the graphics object G. and now we'll say g dot set color to color dot black and then g then i'll grab this draw line code Paste it in, and instead of having it graph dot draw line, I just have to have it g dot draw line now. And then up here in main, we'll call that function um, draw scene, and we'll send it the graphics object graph. Maybe I'll put a scene here that says draws the background. Um, uh, background scene. I don't want to confuse background with the background of the window. Let's make sure that's working. Yep. And then, so I want this ball to roll down. And I feel like I want to have a function do that or not. Mm -hmm. Can't decide. So I, I think I do want a function that's going to do that, but I think what we'll do is we'll first write a loop. Maybe not have a method. Let's just write a loop. So in our loop, so the 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 circle itself goes from zero zero down to five fifty three fifty. So if I had say, if we have it move by twenty five. In, in both or let's go by 10 in both directions. So let me scroll down here. Maybe we have a, the value i, and then we have x, and then we have y. And so just to help us figure out what's going on, I'll make a table here. When i is 0, both x and y are zero. And then at the end, we want x to be 550 and y to be um, 350. That doesn't quite make sense to go by. Um, we can't go by tens in both directions because that won't work. Um, So five goes into both of these. So 550 goes into both. So 50, 550 divided by 50 would be 11. So that's not going to be enough. 
and the loops are the same. So x could go by, oh, I see. If we had 50, that'll work. If i goes down here to 50, where's my pen? Come on. i ends at 50, so we'll have a loop running 51 times from 0 to 50. Then x is changing by 11 each time. So that next one would be 11, and then 22, and then 33. Dot, dot. And how I did that is I just divided 550 by 50 and I got 11. 350 divided by 50 is 7. So y is going to change by 7 each time. So the change in x is 11, the change in y is seven and then and then remember both x and y are starting at zero they don't have to but so x it's let's write it m times i plus b again um, the m here is 11 the b here is zero and y maybe this is mx my times i plus by and again by is zero my is seven Okay, do a little math, that's good for us. So when I switch back over to here, I'm gonna run a loop. After we, uh, I think we're gonna draw the scene actually within the loop. So return there and start a loop here. It says four integer i equals zero i less than or equal to, I wanna say 50, yep. And i is increasing by 1 each time, or i equals i plus 1. And then we'll start our loop, and we'll copy all this stuff into it. So we'll start our loop by drawing the scene. Then we'll set the color to red. Then we need to draw our oval, so the x and the y need to change. And they, the x is now 11 times i plus zero. I don't need to write in the plus zero. And the y is seven times i plus zero. And the, the dimensions there are still 50 and 50. And notice when I call draw scene, it's changing the color back to black. And so what this would do is we wouldn't be ever clearing the panel, but just so we can see it happening, that's going to move the ball down. Whoa, that's kind of cool looking. Um, we could, and again, look at the bottom. So we've, we've separated from the hill a little bit. So I could move that X value over just a little bit on that line, maybe to the right, maybe five pixels. Let's see, where's our line? So instead of having 550 here, let's try 555. And that, that's because our circle is not being determined by like the center of the circle. It's being determined by the edge of the square that the circle fits into. So let's try 560, it might be too much, but let's try it. So this kind of tinkering is okay because it's, we're tinkering with the scene to fit it, that's pretty good. We could do maybe one more, 562, two more pixels if you want it to be even closer. Almost perfect. And it's still not quite touching the hill, so you could do 563, see what happens. Look at that. Okay, so we, we did a little bit of work there to just make it look better. Now, that's while that's cool looking, we want to slow that down a little bit. So in here, let's do a panel.sleep. So we can see it happening, and we'll sleep by, let's go by 100 again. Go a lot slower. It's cool. Okay, so that's a form of animation. It's not what we wanted. I wanted to just have that ball rolling down the hill, which means I need to clear it off each time. So that's why I set up this draw scene was so I could do a panel dot clear. Now I can clear it after the fact like this. And then the problem, I'll show you the problem with that. The problem with the clear at the end is that, wow, there goes the ball rolling down the hill. It's so cool. It has a little flashing, but that's okay. And then at the end, 
everything disappears. So that's fine if you want everything to disappear at the end. That works great. But if you don't want everything to disappear, then you can move this panel dot clear up to the top. And I can say, you know, at the start, so to start to keep final image. These are sort of inline comments that are explaining to the reader why I've done something. Um, so this is an inline comment. I'm commenting on this panel.clear thing. This is a comment about this function call. Um, maybe it's a little easier. Well, I don't, I don't, it's fine. And then run. There's our red ball rolling down the hill. Woo! Stopping at the bottom. Okay, good. And again, while that's just a hill in this background, I could just as easily sort of have a tree over here, or this whole thing could be brown, or I could have the sun up here, or I could do a number of different things animation-wise. This, instead of this being a circle, it could be, you know, a car driving down the hill. Um, I think you get the idea there. All right, I'm gonna close that off, and we will do bouncing ball. Think next. Well. I'm doing a series of things, so it depends on which thing you're watching first. <laughs>